Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Many of our folks are uh, uh, busy enjoying uh, some recreation time uh, at uh, cottages, camping, a few folks that are on the road. Um, we are here. May we be blessed by the word of God, by his presence among us, by his life-renewing word and spirit this day. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, the ladies uh, from our LWML and quilters who uh, put together, uh, packaged together uh, all of the quilts to be distributed to a number of different organizations around our region. Uh, thank you, uh, ladies, for doing all of that work. Um, Kathy, are there about, what, six different organizations or five to which the quilts are going? Something. Okay. Well, let us join together in singing our opening hymn, Come Follow Me, the Savior Spake.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a co-ordained servant of the Lord, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. One of the things God does with forgiven sinners is to put praise at our lips. Let us join together in the introit of this day. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout. Who exalt in your name all the day. For you are the glory of their strength. For our shield belongs to the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us continue with the Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. And for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to 
Almighty God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed among us and follow its directing. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost is from Jeremiah, chapter 28. Then the prophet Jeremiah replied to the prophet Hananiah before the priests and all the people standing in the house of the Lord. He said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words you have prophesied by bringing the articles of the Lord's house and all the exiles back to this place from Babylon. Nevertheless, listen to what I have to say in your hearing and of all the people. From early times, the prophets who preceded you and me have prophesied war, disaster, and plague against many countries and great kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognized as one truly sent by the Lord only if his prediction comes true. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 7. Do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives? For a married woman is bound by law to her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. And if she marries another man, she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. But while we are living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we serve in a new way in the spirit and not in the old way of the written code. What then shall we say? That the law is sin? By no means. Yet if it had not been for the law, I would not have known sin. For I would not have known what it is to covet if the law had not said, you shall not covet. But sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, produced in me all kinds of covetousness. For apart from the law, sin lies dead. I was once alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin came alive and I died. The very commandment of the promised life proved to be dead to me. For sin, seizing an opportunity through the commandment, deceived me and through it killed me. So the law is holy and the commandment is holy and righteous and good. Did that which is good then bring death to me? By no means. It was sin producing death in me through what is good, in order that sin might be shown to be sin, and through the commandment might become sinful beyond measure. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the Holy Gospel. We sing the Alleluia in verse. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. 
And anyone who does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives the one who sent me. Anyone who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And anyone who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will see, receive a righteous man's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will certainly not lose his reward. This is the gospel of our Lord. We join together in professing the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, being not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the singing of the hymn, Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus. <laughs>
May the words of thy mouth and the meditation of our hearts be found righteous in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What we heard from Jesus just a couple minutes ago isn't how most people view him. His word to us today might even be a little shocking to us. But in a sense, that is good. For he wants you and me to consider just who and what are most important to us. Are our lives built on Jesus? Or do other things or people, even family, have priority? Mind you, Jesus isn't anti-family. After all, family was God's idea. He did, after all, command that first man and woman, Adam and Eve, to be fruitful and to multiply. Our families are indeed gifts from God, and they're protected by no less than three of God's Ten Commandments. And in case you're wondering, the fourth, the sixth, and the tenth. But what comes first, God or family? The truths of God's holy word or family? You know, it would be great if we always openly shared the Word of God and all its truth and purity with all of our family members and friends. But you and I know that that's not always the truth. God's Word is, as Jesus spoke, a sword that divides even families. You'll find some family members that are on fire for the Lord and others who are not. So often we find ourselves taking a course in which, so as not to offend, we remain silent or we compromise God's word, telling ourselves that we're simply in the process of keeping the family peace. Oh, it's not right, but it is easier. Sometimes we'll say to ourselves, another time, but rarely does that other time come. And so Jesus hits us today with this hard truth as he says, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not pick up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. I don't know about you, but that convicts me through and through. How awful it is to be cast by the Son of God as unworthy. Jesus' words here are hard for us to stomach. Oh, we may make a good show of faith in Christ here in church, where we feel a little bit more safe. We say our stand up, stand up for Jesus, or lift high the cross, and a whole lot more here. We confess the Christian faith, and we vow to God to be faithful even unto death, but then we walk out of this place. And what happens? You know. So Prince of Peace Jesus comes to us today with a sword. One that might just be piercing our hearts a little bit right now. In God's estimation, this is good. For God is calling you and me back to himself. Much as surgeons use scalpels, for the purposes of doing surgeries for our good. So God uses his word to us this day surgically in order to heal us. And so Jesus comes cutting with his word, exposing the sickness of our sin in order to do his work of healing us with his forgiving word. Come to the sick with sin to make you and me unworthy ones worthy in the sight of God. Jesus gives us peace not with this world in which we live, but with God. And so while our families indeed are important, nonetheless, neither they nor we can find everlasting life in one another, but only in Christ. And he who died and rose again, good news is here today in his word and sacrament, 
in order to give us newness of life. In truth, Jesus met with a sword that now pierces us as he hung upon a cross. He was pierced due to our transgressions, to our unworthiness, to our compromising ways, to our times where we remain silent instead of speaking God's truth. To us who sometimes succumb to paralyzing fear, Jesus himself bore it all upon the cross. He carried all the weight of our sins and God's disgust with them all. And he forfeited his own life in your place and mine so as to bring us new life from God. Well, I dare say, we know that. It's still so hard to share his word of life with others, isn't it? To be like prophet Jeremiah and to faithfully speak God's word in every circumstance? Oh, it is so much easier to tell folks exactly what they want to hear. Neither Jeremiah or his message were well received. Much later, the apostle Paul would face more hostility from the world than I dare say any of us will for our witness to Christ. But even at that, he knew he was a sinner through and through. He testified that sin plagued him daily. As he, like us, battled world and carnal flesh and the devil and fear and unbelief. Sometimes saying to himself, as we might, Jesus in his word just aren't worth our while to share in this circumstance or that. And yet, hear also what Paul said about this every day day battle that you and I too face. He said, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. Paul points to a new reality and better reality that is already ours, that arose in us when we were baptized, where Christ himself joined himself to us, as well as to his death and resurrection. There we die to the condemnation of the law and to sin in his power. We die along with Christ, so as to be raised with him as God's own beloved children, freed from sin to live in and for God. Baptism, in effect, for each of us is our new birth into the family of God. And that's a key for grasping and being comforted by the words of Jesus even in today's gospel. For by virtue of our baptism into Christ, we now belong to this new family that transcends all bounds of time and space. We are part of God's family, which he has told us will last forever. And so when the world tells you or me that blood is thicker than water and that your priorities, firstly, should be your earthly family, even over your relationship with God, here Jesus say the exact opposite is true. Oh, family matters, but by the word and water of holy baptism, God has fashioned bonds greater than all others on earth with him. I dare say with each other by virtue of our being united as one in Christ. And only Jesus has the words of eternal life as we proclaimed with our own lips a little bit ago. He who by his blood has also given power to his word and water. You and I made one children of our Heavenly Father in this new family of life, in which, in a sense, water is almost thicker than blood. In Christ, as members of the household of God, therefore, the master of the household bids us to share his word of life with our family in Christ but also with our families and friends and neighbors, that together we may all be perfected in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sinners made one in him, forgiven our sin for the sake of him who is greater than our sin, Jesus, who gave his life so as to give us the fuller life. 
And in this life, we are to bear much fruit, showing ourselves to be his disciples for our good, but also for the benefit of those even who have strayed away from God. And losing our lives in service to God, we find that we gain a greater life that has no end. And by faith, here in Christ, we have gained family with a heavenly father, but also with many earthly fathers and mothers, grandparents, brothers and sisters, children and grandkids in Christ. The word of God and of Christ may divide us from some of our family members, our earthly family members. Therefore, God calls us to pray that he would draw them back into relationship with him and us and to give a bold confession of the truth before our family members, praying that God's word take effect in their lives. But also, in the meantime, know his will is that no one perish. So, be bold in sharing Jesus with your family, your friends, your neighbors, strangers, whoever it might be. But in the same time, same regard, keep in mind also how richly God is rewarding those who abide in the truth of his word. With family, that isn't about competing with him for our love and time, but with family in which he keeps us united. With family that doesn't demand of us to keep it united by walking away from the Lord, but one in which he he keeps us as one. For what God unites or joins, he keeps as one in Jesus. And joined in baptism, bound by his word of grace, our God is caring for us as his beloved children. He still feeds us the very body and blood of his Son, in whom we live. That's why Jesus speaks to us today as he does. He speaks of receiving his apostles, his prophets, his righteous ones, his children, his own, speak his life-giving, family-creating word. We belong to Christ. We are of the family of faith. And to receive one another is to receive Christ and his word, by which we are born from above and given and kept in the Christian faith and gifted by God with everlasting life. In that regard, Jesus is the center of the unending Christian life. He comes to the family of God called church. He meets us at the altar of his cross, at the baptismal font, at the communion rail. And there he speaks to us and he gives so as to remind us just why we are here. To receive him who bridges the great gap between God and sinners that we can't do ourselves. Yes, Jesus, ensuring that whatever may befall us in this world, be it discord, trouble, sin, even death, that nothing can separate us, that is us, from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. For he has claimed us as his very own. We are his, born anew into his family. Put another way, as did St. John, how great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. For us children of God, therefore, every day is an Independence Day. We might look later on this week to the 4th of July and commemorate that Independence Day uh, in our nation's history. But in the Christian life, we are daily freed by Christ to live as God's own. And every day, unlike last Sunday being Father's Day, is our Heavenly Father's Day. Each lived under His grace and love, each in His pardon and care. We, His sons and daughters in Christ, receiving great blessing upon blessing, even as we face struggles and challenges and divisions and failures. For our God and Father is about the business of blessing. He'll even use the sword of his word to cut, as painful as that might be, for the purposes of healing 
to bring us back to him well, healthy, for our greater good in Jesus. God grant us all that, even as we bear the burden of carrying our crosses and following him, knowing that he has carried the weight of the heaviest cross of all for you and for me, and following him, he is leading us step by step toward heaven itself. In Jesus' name, amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, continue to guard your hearts and your minds always through the same Christ our Lord to life everlasting. Amen. We continue our worship with the prayer of the church. The congregation may remain seated. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Before we commence with our various petitions, just uh, three additional people to add to your prayer lists. Our bulletins were printed before uh, uh, they either entered the hospital or suffered a fall. In the case of B. Meyer, she suffered a fall in her living room at home on Thursday evening. Pray for her uh, quick return to health, and uh, she suffered some uh, gashes on her head, uh, some stitches were required, pray that she uh, uh, regain her health. Also, Jeffrey Stewart, who underwent uh, uh, surgery on, on one of his uh, heart muscles there, uh, heart uh, vessels, had a stent in place on Friday, and also Wayne Matthew, who underwent uh, hip surgery on Friday. Those who are in the hospital are going well. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty Father, your law is holy, righteous, and it convicts us of our sin. But you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, as a true prophet to speak peace upon us. And it came to pass as he reconciled us to you through his own shed blood. Through baptism, you have bound us together in your church, where we have died to the law. As we now belong to the risen Jesus and each other, cause us to bear your holy fruit. By your Holy Spirit, draw us closer to you. Returning us to our baptism through confession of our sins, causing us to die to sin and to rise and find new life and peace in you alone. As your peace is not the world's peace, and the word of Christ often divides even families and homes, Empower us boldly to share the light of your salvation with this sin-darkened world around us, that others too may know the true peace that comes only from you. Lord, in your mercy, King of kings, bless our nation and its leaders, that our freedoms may be preserved. We ask you curb all war and violence. Watch out over and protect those who risk their lives to protect and defend us, and at the last, gather us into your heavenly home to dwell in your everlasting peace. Lord, in your mercy, God of love, we thank you for your every blessing imparted to us, including the gifts of our families. Bless the many couples among us who have recently or will soon celebrate their wedding anniversaries, including Raymond and Sharon Schlickman, 60 years together. Paul and Melissa Kozajan, Harold and Alice McDonald, 57 years as husband and wife, Lee and June Schlickman, 26 years, Brian and Janet Bonsack, whose anniversary is today, Kelly and Kim Salander, celebrating 24 years tomorrow, as well as Pastor Allen and Ginger Cram, 35 years tomorrow, and James and Ruth Johnson, who celebrates 60 years as husband and wife this Wednesday. Bless also those amongst us who observe birthdays, and grant to them and to us all your abiding presence, love, and peace, Lord, in your mercy. O great physician, graciously heal those with ailing bodies, troubled minds, or depressed spirits, plus the lonely and all others in need. Restore to full health Jeff and Wayne following their surgeries this past Friday. Strengthen and renew all of our other brothers and sisters in Christ who are facing medical treatments and care. Cause them and us to look to you alone for forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. For 
Lord Jesus, you bid us to come to receive your holy and precious body and blood for the full pardon of our sin. In this feast of victory, grant us also a foretaste of the feast to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, as from your hand come all good things, give favorable conditions for a bountiful harvest in our land, that it may bring forth abundant fruit for your people. Prosper also all commerce and industry in our nation, and bless also the work of our hands that we offer in service to you. For into your hands, most merciful God, we command all for which we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand. We continue with the service of the sacrament, the preface on page 160, or in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Jesus Christ on the night in which he is betrayed to breath. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Come to the table of the Lord. Take heed. This is the true body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give him to death for all your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ continue to strengthen and preserve you in body and soul unto life everlasting. Depart in peace.
Please rise, we join together in singing the post-communion canticle.
One day we will see our Lord face to face. What joy, sheer joy, shall fill our hearts, our lives ever freed from all that burdens us in this world, freed to live with and for God, together with those saints who have gone before us. So many of those folks we remember in our lives and our minds. So often, it does bring weeping, even after much time has passed, having this forcible separation through death. And yet, God has made that old enemy, that last enemy called death, into the very gateway into his everlasting presence and joy. May we, like saints before us, see him face to face, not just like them, but with them. Just uh, please take note of the various announcements in your bulletins. Uh, I would uh, just kind of alert you to uh, next Sunday's service. We'll have a little bit of a patriotic flair with it, with uh, several hymns that relate to uh, our nationhood and living as Christians in this land. Uh, please invite others to join us on that, what uh, often is a very busy weekend, uh, either in, in person here with us uh, in the sanctuary here of God's house at St. John's, or uh, virtually uh, through uh, possibly live streaming, right, Brandy? We shall see if that works out for next Sunday. We may be live streaming our services beginning next Sunday. In the meantime, the Lord keep you all safe as you uh, approach uh, uh, the 4th of July, may the Lord keep you safe, especially if you're handling any fireworks and so forth, but also if you are traveling and, and so forth. And continue, let us continue to keep one another in the prayer and the care and the keeping of our God. Let us go forth in his joy and serve him with gladness. Mm -hmm.